I'm going to record them now. Right, okay, da, da, volume's fine. Right, okay, right. So, UFC light heavyweight rank number 15, Jamal Hill. It's a long time since I've spoke to you. How are you doing? Oh, no, brother. I've been good. I've been good. How about yourself? Awesome, my man. I'm good. Just been uh, catching up on fights and just trying to see where you're at. It's been a couple of months since the MMA community got to hear from you, see what you've been up to. First of all, how is your arm? It's good, man. The elbow's good. It's healing up. I got uh, pretty much about 98 to 99% range of my motion back. Uh, you're building strength back to it now, you know, and uh, things are looking good. So you're back using it in mm -hmm. all aspects yeah, of training? I've yeah. been sparring for over a month now. Oh, brilliant. Light, light sparring, like light contact. But I've been, I've been working it, working with it for, for over a month now. And no permanent damage, nothing that's going to be niggling in a couple of months' time, nothing like that? Uh, we're going to have to see. We'll just see we'll yeah. play how, how it comes. Fair enough, fair enough. So, you know, those things. Yeah, can't, can't imagine. Just based on, like we says, we were able, me and the world got to see exactly what it was like, and uh, it was very graphic and very gnarly. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you can only go by, I suppose, experience and testing out there in the field. Without a doubt. So, three months or so since uh, UFC Glendale. Now, we don't need to go on about how big the card was and how much of a kind of hype that was built around it. Um, mm. What am you got to find out, though, for yourself? So, we know that you've had a really great career up to this point. Still great, but you experienced your first loss. How are you feeling uh, some months after that? Um, still, I mean, I feel, I still feel the same. I mean, I don't feel, I don't feel, um, I don't feel no way about it. I'm, I'm, I'm good mind, body and spirit. I took it as a, I took it as a lesson, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for a long time. I wondered like, damn, what would happen if I actually lost? You got to think I've been fighting since 2010. So I had a long time, like, oh, I wouldn't know what to do. Uh, and like all of that, you know what I mean? And then I've also had time to see other, other fighters who were undefeated, who uh who were on the top who were at the top riding high and stuff and they and they took a loss. You know what I mean? Some handled it like men, some didn't. You know what I'm saying? And uh you got it's it's all about the type of man you are, the type of man, type of fighter you are, you know. I lost. What can I do about it? But learn from it and improve from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Was it true that when you were on the ground, did you go up and tell Paul Craig that you wanted to stand up out of respect just uh for what he'd done? Was that true? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, they wanted me. They wanted me. They wanted to uh, bring the stretcher. Yeah. They wanted to bring a stretcher in and get me out or get me carted off right out. Uh, get just pretty much hurry up and get me right out of the ring and everything. And I'm like, nah. You know what I'm saying? For me, like, I hate it when a fighter loses and he gets pissed and he don't want to go up and for the announcement because he don't want to stand there and see that man be crowned victorious over you. But he was yeah. victorious over you. You know what I'm saying? That's what it was. I've I've had many a times I've stopped I've, for 12 years. I've spent me standing there getting my hand raised and the next person right there and me shaking a hand. Good job. Hey, saying this, keep it all of that, saying all that, all of that shit I've said after I've beaten everybody meant nothing. If I didn't go up and show that respect. Yeah. No, and I think that that would have been taken very respectfully as well. So one big thing I noticed from that now, UFC aside, because we'll, we'll get into that very shortly. Right. But, Looking into the way you acted after the fight, you've got a lot more fans. I think your stocks went up. Would you would you say you've noticed that? Yeah, yeah. It definitely went up from where I thought it would if I had a – from dealing with a loss. You know what I mean? Especially how I lost. You know what I mean? Let's be real. Um, I lost in under two minutes. You know, I didn't really get to get any of my shit off. You know, uh, I let him get right into his thing, and uh, he was able to pull out, pull out a, a, a quick victory. So, from that perspective, it's just, yeah, it was supposed, like, I expected, like, they had people to shit on me, all of this and that, and some have tried, many have tried, yeah. but uh, the love has just been, it's been a lot, you know what I'm saying, the support has been real, you know what I mean, and then most of it came from the Scottish people, most of the, a lot well, of, some of the people that were talking shit, before the fight, other ones like, bro, fuck all that, man. You're a fucking warrior. Like, I can't believe you kept trying to fight. Like, holy shit. Like, you know what I mean, they didn't even mention anything from before the fight. That speaks volumes. That that's what I seen as well. I seen a lot of people hyping and 
I seen it, man. You were, you were, you were still trying to punch, and I'm looking at the position you're in, and I'm like, how the hell is he still like? How is he still up? Like most people who are not trained fighters would be lying on the ground, completely kind of out of it, you know, like out of it, out of fear, not continuing to fight. I was thinking about winning, man. I'm a competitor, man. I'm a competitor yeah. and I'm a fighter, man. If I, if I, if I feel like there's an opportunity for me to for, to get that W, I'm going for it. Yeah, man. That's the mentality. It speaks volumes. So as we kind of discussed earlier on, so the, the support from the fans has been great. I've seen it on social media. You've told us about it as well. Now, UFC promotional aspects of things. Are you feeling the love for the UFC or are you not really seen anything since? Nah, man, I ain't really seen it. I didn't even see it leading up into that fight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I felt like, I felt like I uh, promoted up. I felt like I built that fight up very well. You know what I'm saying? Like for, 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 for the following that I have and everything like that and how much like, you know what I mean? Paul was more about business, you know, he wasn't really on social media. He just kind of stuck to stuck to the job aspect. You know what I mean? I was more the voice of uh, the voice of the fight. You know what I'm saying? And it and it was insane. Like you seen the weigh-ins, the weigh-in video, the way our weigh-in was one of the most intense hype videos of, you know what I mean, of the year. I felt like, you know what I mean? So uh yeah, we didn't get any push. Like Bilal Muhammad, Bilal Muhammad posted, made a po uh, posted on Instagram the week up of a poster that was made or whatever. It had every fight on the main card, but me and Paul Craig. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Every fight from the main card was on there, but me and Paul Craig. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> they, they don't, they don't, they don't. It's like they don't mess with me. You know? Then like I said, uh, I um. I just seen a video, you know, the contender series just came back. Yeah. You know, uh, I seen the contender series video, you know, they're talking about rising stars from uh they came they come off the have come off the contender series and all this and that. Um they had Sean O'Malley, which I get that. He's he's as far as notoriety, he's been blown up the biggest. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they had Kevin Holland. Outside of Kevin Holland. Jimmy Crute was on there. Who's beating better dudes than me? And I don't even think Holland's beating better guys than me. You know what I'm saying? Holland beat Jacare. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So where where Jacare got in his career, OSP got higher. You know what yeah. I mean? Yep. Yeah. So fuck you, know, you know what I mean? Like. I feel like the work that I've done and what I put in is it, 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 it just it just gets minimized. You know what I mean? It's just like overlooked, like brushed over, like oh, you know what I mean, folks do that, which I am, it is my job. But then you got like these guys coming in and they're doing like all this and it's, oh, it's getting blown up and shit. But these guys are getting are getting built up to get beat the hell up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's what's happening. You know what I mean? A lot of these guys like, like you know, like Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley's been in the UFC for how long? Yeah, a couple of years now. A couple of years. Two years. It's more than a couple of years because I got here a couple of years ago. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Sean O'Malley guy was there like at least two, three years before me. Uh, how is it that the level of opponents that I face is higher than his? Yeah, there's, there's a point to be. Than he has. Yeah, he's, he's still yet to get into that ranked fighter stage. There's a lot of controversy about him not fighting a ranked but, fighter yet as well. But what's happening though? He hasn't, but, and then he's, uh he hasn't, but he's being blown up. Everything he does, they share his social media posts. They share everything. You know what I mean? They they still feeding him favorable matchup. They fed him. A guy. I haven't fought a debuter since I've been in the UFC. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Every single, every, like I just made a post earlier because I actually thought about this. I was looking at, my, my uh, the people that I fought, like the as far as fight experience, if you take the fighters in ten fights, in my ten fights of experience as a pro, I will face dudes. The the dudes have that I have fought have totaled what, a hundred and sixty six fights. So vet veterans of the sport, very experienced fighters as well. You know what I'm saying? Like top, like top dudes. You know what I mean? Like they have more. They have. Two, two, three times as many wins as I have fights. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm going in and I'm proving myself. So like, I don't really know what else I'm supposed to do to, to where I can get to where I can get my brand helped out by the company. You know what I mean? Because That's... Sean O'Malley was helped out by the company right out the gate. And who is the dude that he knocked out? What is he, what is that dude even doing? You know what I'm saying? Who is any of the people like, you know what I mean? Hi, if, if we're doing a comparison. Yeah, if we're doing a comparison. They gave Sean O'Malley one real test. The one time he fought a ranked dude, he got his ass whooped. You know what I mean? And they had a million excuses afterwards. Not no man shit. You know what I'm saying? They keep blowing up these guys that don't know how to that that whenever they lose, they act like, you know what I mean? Yeah, un- undefeated, undefeated. So just on that basis right. then, so we've sp- you yourself, so if we're going by the narrative of a fighter and the way that you were hyping up the fight with Paul Craig and that as well, so we know that fans usually love that type of vibe and that type of approach because it gives them that, it's almost kind of not wrestling, but you know you've got your heel and you've got your baby face kind yeah. of thing. People usually love that. Right. I get, I get it's, just about, it's just something about it that, but I guess that I guess the blood going, I guess the, I guess yeah. people drawing it. Damn, I wonder if he could really do that. Because yeah. whenever you speak on something, and so you speak a, because whenever you speak about something and it goes and it visits people's mind, they probably think about the best that they've ever seen it done. Hey, I wonder if he can, hey, make any entertain me like that moment did. You know what I mean? I mean, I think I think the solution would be then. I mean, I know that the the UFC machine. We know what they're doing with O'Malley. We know what we're doing with, like it says, Kevin Holland, based on all the activity that he was doing when he had kind of like was it five fights in a year. Is that right? Um, mm-hmm. Something like that. So, I mean, you're never too far away from it, but it's difficult because when you're putting in all the time and all the hours, and yeah, it's you're crazy. Still not but here's the, the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Like they they're getting the push, and we're fighting the same level of opponents, bro. Yeah. Like I'm finishing dudes too. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I fought, I fought under UFC for, 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 you know what I mean? For UFC, under their banner, you know what I mean? Total for them, I fought five times. All right? I've won four. Yeah. I went to one decision. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. One decision, four and four of my wins, one decision, three finishes. Yeah. Which is what people want. Which is what we're, we're told. You, is, exactly. We we're not talking like like we're talking TKOs like like you did you see my contender series fight? I, I would have seen it. Yeah, I would have definitely seen it. Yeah. So 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 the contender series fight, I went in TKO'd him, TKO'd him in the second round. Yeah. Stosic, I put on a clinic against Stosic, and my hand was broken that fight. My mm-hmm. dominant hand was broken in that fight. You know what I mean? And still put on a clinic on my man. Came out, finish. Came out, finish. You know, long layoff, COVID. I mean, for, ain't no excuse. Paul Craig pulled some slick shit. This the slick man. But yeah. uh, uh, you know, I show I showed that I was I was I ain't give up. I wasn't I was willing, I was willing to, I was willing to literally lay everything on lay everything out there to try to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So so what can't you market about me? Yeah, I, I don't. Again, it's a really tough. It's a really tough one because you know that you know yourself. You're always one fight or one moment away from being fit, fitting the frame of what they want in a fighter that they can market. So it's really tough because you would be sitting there wondering what do I, what have I got to do um, to step outside and show you that I'm marketable. When I think you're marketable. I mean, you've already marketed yourself and done just the marketing yourself, but. An extra yeah. push by the UFC wouldn't go amiss. You know it would help. Right, yeah, would be huge. Yeah, man. You know what I mean, but it ain't. <laughs> it ain't clear. What, what do you, you think it's like, gonna? What do you think it's gonna you take? How, you, the, you know how you remember when they were doing the prospects to watch video yeah. before the fights, and they were showing dudes that like came off the contender series. It was mainly dudes that came off the contender series before before the fight. They fought on the cards that weekend. Remember when I fought OSP? They did a video of that. Like, oh, he came off the contingency. Oh, we can't wait to see. They didn't even put me in that one. I was in no post. The only post that I was in leading up into the OSP fight was the face-off. Was when me and him faced off. Every other post was on him. And is that something that you could... Could you approach someone about that and speak to management and that and go, hey, what's going on, man? I'm putting in the hours. I'm putting in the time. 
What's going on? Where's the market? And we're trying to build a brand. No. No? No, they ain't no, no. I mean, they just got to choose to do it. Interesting. Pretty much what it is. You know, like. Interesting. Like um, any, like, like they talking like, I just seen a post earlier. I just seen a post earlier. It says, uh, like, all oh, one-liner kings, all oh, best quotes and stuff. Like, don't get me wrong. I like Nate. I like Nate. I like Nate. I like how Nate fights and all of that. You know what I mean? He cool and everything. But my man don't be saying shit, bro. You know what I mean? I'm not surprised, motherfucker. Like, that's like, you know what I mean? Like playing play touch butt with some dork in the park. That shit was funny. Now that shit, <laughs> yeah, man. That shit he's, got, he's got some lines. He's got some lines. He's got some lines, bro. But like, it's not nothing that's like crazy, like creative, like that to me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think people really, really like me. Be listening, listen to what I say. I can. T- I know people don't listen to what I say because I said a quote that I know was money, and then. Bro said it, and that shit blew up. Remember what, that? What quote was up? Uh, I let him sleep on me. I let the doctor, but I let the and then let the doctor wake him up. See, that's that in itself. That that's something that you would again you would expect um, people to kind of watch on to. I mean, I think that I mean, if we're looking at Nate, think, they never put it in none of my. They never put it in nothing, none of my uh, stuff leading up to any of my fights or anything. But when when well, when chaos said it, they put it in all bro shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they blew yeah. it up all over line and everything. You know what I mean? Man, uh, I said something else, and then another fighter, another fighter said that shit. Because I remember a fan cat tagged me in and they called and they called it out or whatever. Shit. And they still they ran with that shit. Like I I just said the lion in the doghouse. The uh shit, touch him up. University blew up. Yeah, that that, that boy. Up. Take him to the U. But I uh, and I done dropped all type of lines, man. Yeah, man. I, and I mean, it's all there. I mean, would you think then? I mean, you're doing all that. Do Do you not think that perhaps if that's not working, get out there and get into a fight and just start kind of knocking oh, some heads wow. off, man. Last fight, whenever me and Paul Craig had our little exchange or whatever downstairs, uh, that boy, like even when I, even whenever I had that little exchange with Paul Craig downstairs, remember the whole, uh, you got some nasty ass breath. That's cool. I got some nasty ass hands too. That was right off the top, bro. Like, yeah, did man. you see? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they were all, they were all brought up. People were talking about that. People were sharing that cut went viral. <laughs> I didn't even realize it was going to be a, even like a thing like that until like Brandon Moreno and other people started coming up to me there like, ah, oh, nasty ass hands, look good. Like, like that shit was, you know what I mean? I just, like, I just, anytime I get on the mic, I just drop some shit. Like the, uh, what was it? What'd I say? The play with your, uh, play with your wife, play with your kids, play with your toes. Don't play with me. You know what I mean? Like, cool. Oh, that's gold, bro. It is, but again, it's just one of these things, man. It's probably going to need to be because you're you're being yourself, you know. You're bringing yourself into the mix. I think that probably a way. Oh, my bad, bro. I don't. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't mean to cut you off. This just this is just, <laughs> now. Who's the first fighter to be to smoke on their story? Be smoking on their story and doing all of that as far as the weed go. I mean, I would personally, I would have only, I would have only seen Nate Diaz do it until yourself. I mean, did you do it before Nate Diaz? No, nah, I give it to Nate Diaz though, because Nate Diaz was there before me. You know what I mean? I give it, I, I give it to them. I give it to them. But I'm talking about as far as like the stories and just sparking up your spark. You seen them with pictures? You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about making the stories as far as firing up your shit. No, nobody else was doing that. They started doing that shit after I did. Even Connor do it now. Well, you know what I'm saying? Listen, man, sometimes you can be a trendsetter, but not get I'm the accolades. <laughs> I think what you need to do is you just need to get into your next fight and give them no choice. No choice but to kind of face face and see what they've got in front of them and see what they're missing. 
Oh yeah. Ah man, look, I'm already, I'm already on it, bro. Yeah, man, I don't doubt it. So and just then, jump in. We gonna get the, we gonna get the, we gonna, we gonna, uh, we running, we running this one back. You know, we running this one back because you know, I was made an honorary Scotsman. Yeah, so, man, you, you got a lot of props across here. So, so, so my last opponent got one on us. I got, we got to get it back. Be great to see it. It would be, it would be very interesting to see it go. Um, kind of stand and trade both you in the middle. See how it goes. We know how it went the last time, but I'd love to see a longer mm-hmm. fight. Nobody, listen to me, bro. And I'm dead ass. Nobody in the world will stand and trade with me, bro. Nobody. Nobody. And if they do, they won't last. I oh, promise, bro. As far as standing, nobody, you, I doubt we will ever see a fight where somebody just straight up stands. We've seen the fights. We've seen the fights. Like, We've seen like the real evidence. Life. Real life. Uh, though you, I don't think we'll ever see a fight where anybody stands and like, like for real. And that's another thing. You know what I mean? As far as matchups, like look at like look at the matchups. Sean O'Malley has been, been fair. You know what I mean? Like brawler, 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 striker, old old brawler. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Sean O'Malley hasn't faced a wrestler. He hasn't faced not one all all American wrestler. He hasn't faced no. not one jujitsu black belt. No, not one. You know what I mean? But he's getting blown up and all of that. <laughs> I came in, I came, I came in, what did I get? Judo wrestler, jujitsu guy, OSP, most submissions and you and uh light heavyweight uh hey, history. Man. He's got Paul a record there. Fighter, Jimmy Crook, jujitsu wrestler. You know what I'm saying? So I mean right. when we're doing comparisons then, I mean O'Malley's been criticized a lot for that. Yeah. Um, based on the record. So, I mean, uh, again, it's one of these things that uh, all comes down to marketing again. I, I don't know. I don't have a solution myself, but it's, uh, it's a very interesting thing like that to see such a, a I, and, difference. And I like to be clear. I'm not hating on Sean O'Malley. I'm not hating on nobody. I'm, no, just, using doing what doing, I'm just using them as examples. I'm glad. I'm, I want to see everybody win. I'm glad they're getting the shiny. They get. yeah. I'm glad they're getting the bag that they're getting. I know what it's like to be out here. You know what I mean? And I, So, I, you know what I mean? So I, I want them to have that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm my thing is it's enough, it's enough bag for everybody. You know what I'm saying? They can push everybody to say, you know what I mean? Well, not everybody, but it's more of us out here than what they really push. Yeah. No, you know what I'm saying? so talking about pushing and talking about um fights. So there's been rumors of a fight with you and Jimmy Crook. Now that was supposed to be October. Is that still going ahead? Has there been changes? What's what's the what's the scope on that? It's not going to happen October second, but it is going to happen this year. Yeah, it's got to happen this year. It will happen this year. It won't. It will happen this well, year. It will happen this year. What December? Sweet dreams so will be that... back this year. Sweet dreams will be back this year. Hundred percent. Probably December then. Yeah. Well, look now you're prying too much. All right. Yeah, man. Listen, that, that's fine. So, just jumping on to Jimmy yeah, Crook. It could be so, anywhere. It could be Madison Square Garden. It could be anywhere. You ever, you ever had a moment where yeah. you can think of that being a reality? MSG, Sweet Dreams. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah, imagine that. One day. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. So, jumping on to Jimmy Crook. So, he's also beat Paul Craig, somebody that, as we know, you well. came short against. Um, I take it. If we're talking about strategy, you've spoken length about your ground game. Will you be practicing a lot of your ground game for Jimmy Crook? I'm gonna practice my ground game, uh, same as I always do. You know, um, I accept, I accept what happened. I got caught. You know what I mean? But also, there was more to it than just me getting caught. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there was a certain sense of arrogance there that's normally not. You know what I mean? There was a certain sense of, I don't know, I don't know. If I had to say it was anything, it was a lay. It was a. It was. It was the long layoff, plus the fact of yeah, I don't get. I don't. I don't get. I don't get the push like 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 that. So whenever I'm not fighting, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. And I'm just in a layoff. It's just I gotta create my own everything. I gotta create my own buzz, my own business, everything. You know what I'm saying? So it was just you know what I mean. Just a frustration with that and just everything, man. Just 
certain stuff, you know what I mean, personal stuff going on, you know what I mean? And it just, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Someone's, someone's, there it all added to that arrogance, something to the, just to that arrogance to where I felt like all I had to do was show up. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, don't get me wrong. I worked, I worked hard. I always put the work in, but that, that little extra was sometimes whenever it was like, all right, you get it, that little extra push. And I go do this little extra thing. It was like, you know what I mean? That arrogance was like, yeah, man, I got this one. You know what I mean? I do it next time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it'll never be that again. You know what I'm saying? And that, so that mindset, do you carry that mindset in all fights? Or was this one different just due to a lot of factors like COVID? To an extent, yep. I do. But not to that extent, not to that extent to where I I know what 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 work takes. You know what I mean? All right, that extra shit, that, that little extra thing in the back of my mind. Like my mind is always telling me to do more. So it's telling me, and I ignored it this last time because I was like, all I gotta do is show up. I got this. I'm like, he can't beat me. He cannot beat me. You know what I'm saying? And I was taught that what I had, what I've had up until this point, everything I've done. Up, I need to get back to that, and that's what I need to do. Mm-hmm. So I take it from from the moment of that fight. Then was that change of attitude? Get back to the the attitude that you you've kind of came up on in that sense. Is that, mm-hmm. that kind of been the narrative? Yeah, 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 man. So because you know what I mean, I just beat OSP. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And nothing came of that shit. Like like people are like like yeah, I got the rank or whatever, but it didn't feel, it didn't feel like that. It didn't feel like I had really just accomplished something like, like, you know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong. The people inside fight, like you be OSP, like all, like from that, like people that know, like, no, no, but like, it was like, it was just like, a, oh, well, you know what I'm saying? It's difficult because OSP, we, we know. Much, that's pretty much what it was like. Yeah. I mean, we, we know OSP's name. I mean, of mm-hmm. course his name now and over the last couple of years has uh, has not been held in the same regard as it was a couple of years ago, you know, and nah. uh, maybe maybe you lost a bit of name value perhaps, and I mean, that doesn't devalue your win, I mean, we know everybody knows who OSP is, he's fought all the best fighters, you know. That's what anybody say, man, you can be like oh, OSP, or just go fight him, go fight him and find out, you know what I'm saying? I was in there. I felt I, I had to catch him. I had to, I had to catch. I had to find the little tricks that he was trying to play. You know what I'm saying? I had to eat some of eat some of the little shit that I had to do to get inside. You know what I'm saying? So I know. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of whatever anybody's saying, it, I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I also know his weaknesses. You know what I mean? My man's he can't. He can't. I know he would. He he could never. He would never been able to keep up with the volume. The volume that it would have took to try to, to try to, to actually beat me, actually come after me, to actually hit, to actually try to finish me. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what people don't realize. Like, like, like I want a motherfucker that's gonna try to come try to finish me because <laughs> that'd be that'd be the, the, what 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 you would have to eat to have to come finish me is not humanly possible. See, I don't know. That's think. see that's something that we've not seen yet. Now, just going back to Crook, so we know that Crook. He's known for his ground game, but we know that he's got some finishes in his own right. I mean, what do you think of Crook? Like, are you a fan? Have you watched these fights before? What's the what's the yeah, thoughts on Jimmy Crook? Nah, like, yeah, man, he cool. I met him. I met him in Jacksonville uh, after the Anthony Smith fight. He was cool, you know. And, uh, yeah, I've seen some of his fights, but uh, to me, he a wrestler, bro. <laughs> He wanna he just wanna grab you. He he don't wanna stay, he don't wanna stand with me. He's got some he's got some decent punches. I'm wrong. He's a power to me, he's a power puncher. He's a powerful wrestler. Yeah. I mean, with some with with uh with the jujitsu pedigree. So which honestly, you know what I mean, as far as jujitsu movement, his shit is is more wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like he likes, he likes, he likes head and arm chokes. He likes uh, Kimuras, you know what I'm saying, and uh, guillotines. That's wrestler shit. I mean, if you beat Jimmy Crute, where do you think that puts you in the division? Like when, when, when I beat Jimmy Crute? Uh, when I beat Jimmy Crute, I mean, 
14 probably. <laughs> probably looking at somebody just outside the top 10 or right inside the top 10. Anybody else that you fancy? Um, I mean, we'll, we'll get on to the top part of the division because I've been uh, I've been speaking to people in the top part of the division as well, just kind of going back and forth, finding out what's going on. I mean, what about Falcon Ozdemir and people like that? Are they are those opponents that you fancy after their fights? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Falcon's got the name value. I mean, he's got he put shit, he produced, he helped, he uh fucking his name helped catapult my man's up into. Up into a title can up into a title fight. Yeah. After two fights. After one fight with him and then one fight with another guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So sure, yeah, his name's up there. So you see. Cause I mean, honestly, the dude I really want to fight, because I feel like he'll really come and give me that fight is your is Yuri Perhashkov. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And everybody, like everybody is blown away by him. You know what I'm saying? Which he's a, he is a good fighter and things like that. You know what I mean? But <laughs> it's a whole nother level, bro. <laughs> it's a whole nother level, bro. I'm trying to tell you, bro. It's a whole nother level. So I can touch anybody. You standing up, standing up with me, standing up with me is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. You can't escape it. You know what I mean? It's like a nightmare you can't wake up from until, you know what I mean? You figure something out or they get you out. You know what I mean? So I was so I was talking to GD a couple of weeks ago. I had him on the show and he seems he seems very set on the title. And um Who? Uh, I had GD on the show, Prokaska. Jimmy? Oh Yuri. Yeah, yeah, right. Yuri. I had him on the show a couple of weeks ago and I was just chatting to him about fights, chatting to him about what his plans are and of course, we know where he is in, in the kind of title aspect right. of things now. I was talking to him about his style of fighting, so you've told me a lot about the danger that you can bring. Now, people say that he's got a really risky style of fighting. You know, he kind of puts himself out there. and That's because they don't understand it. It's not as, much, it's not as risky as they, as they would say, unless you really know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless you really know. It's flow. It's flow. You know what That's mean? what he, he said. He said flow. no. Yeah, this is the he same thing I do. You know what I mean? He listen, he listen, he listened to a lot of you can tell he listened to a lot of Bruce Lee. You know what I'm saying? Like that crash and flow shit, be water. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that shit is real, bro. If yeah. you can actually like understand that and mimic that philosophy into your fighting, it's you it opens your mind up to some crazy shit. Creativity and strike, you know what I mean? And if and like and fighting, you know what I mean? So more superpowers beyond everybody else just kind of makes you one step ahead. Mm-hmm. Real talk. I think that should be a fun, that would be a fun, nice flow through sick thing, but I don't think he'd be able to keep up with, with what I can do. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing that shit for a long time. A real long time. And I'm really good at it. What do you think? Do you think he's... Uh... Would you see him up against people like uh, the title? Jan? Yeah, Jan Blakovic. Jan, Jan, Jan's getting more and more efficient from what uh from what I can tell. You know what I mean? His flow, like with his with his with his accuracy, he's more accurate. You know what I mean? Cause even like cause like people like from the outside, a lot of fighters, people that don't fight don't understand. Sometimes whenever you miss a punch or you land a punch on the arm or something, you meant to do that. You're trying to set him up to put him in a certain place. Jan's kind of learning that a little bit. I've seen that a little bit more so in the Izzy fight, you know, kind of how he touched the top of Izzy's jab oh, and then a five in, like, you know what I mean, knife right through. Uh, Jan, Jan can catch him. Yeah, he can, he, he showed that he can be caught. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dominic Reyes could, was catching him. Dominic yeah. Reyes would have been, uh, been better off if he had a, if he had a, if he had a, uh, if he had a, Countered with combinations. He knocked him out for a second, though, didn't he? Did he not knock him out for like a split second? I don't think so. I think Yuri admitted that he was he was uh, out I for a second. I think he heard him. I know he heard him. I know he hit him with that left hand. And that, it, it stunned him for a second. Yeah, but I don't think yeah. Dominic Reyes don't know how to like that. People don't know how to close in off of like you know and get in and. Lay your shots. The footwork ain't there. That's another reason why I beat him because my footwork is better than his. 
You know what I mean? But, yeah. It's inter- interesting times. It's uh, it's the, the division that people used to say didn't have lots of potential from Jones onwards. It seems to be getting a lot of people coming together. I mean, that's you and Paul Craig included. Johnny Walker. We've got Tiago Santos as well. What about what do you think of Johnny we Walker? Got a you? Guys coming out that uh uh oh boy they put on the uh on the contender series with uh Kennedy and Jetri- uh Kennedy's and Jetri- Him him he coming up too, you know. Uh he, he may he, he's learning. He's looking, he's looking, he's looked all right his last couple of fights. Then uh the other guy, the kickboxer guy who they had on there, uh, who just the, the Jacoby guy or yeah, Kobe or Jacoby guy. Yeah. Him, he's he's up, looking, yeah. he looks he looks like he looked pretty good, you know. Lonzo in the field. You know, he's he might have took a couple losses, but it was just only a couple losses, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we got some so for people to be like, Oh, we have the most I mean, we we got the most stacked division. We got the most stacked division. Like y'all, like and it's the little guys, bro. Like y'all little as hell, bro. We got the most stacked division. But they promote y'all shit more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Seems and that's the kind of friendly. They promote the little man's division and shit more. But yeah. like as far as skill and like like that shit, like I think it's more there. So, I mean, I think then that for more eyes to be brought in for the brand to get a bit more attention. I give them the fact that they're more active because they usually, because they're smaller and they usually hang around more so that more of their body weight, uh, their uh, their fighting weight or whatever. Yeah, that makes a difference, man. I mean, recovery, I mean, when you're getting hit from a light heavyweight, I can imagine the repercussions being much harder than a lightweight or a featherweight, you know? Right. Without a doubt. Oh, it's mad. Um, so, yeah, so they're able to stay more active too, you know. Yep. Like we said, it's a complete way. It's, it's weight class is divided, you know. It's a very big, difficult way to kind of pinpoint it. But logistically, we know what the problem is. We know why they're more active and why they're not. But, I mean, you yourself, you're going to be active soon. Um, we're going to get to see you, as we said, this year, um, Jimmy Crook. So are you going there to make a statement? And, I mean, I think that, you going in there making a the statement against Jimmy Crute. He has got a name. He's not got a name as significant as some of the other people, but he's got a very big follow and reputation. He's in a good market across in Australia. I think beating him is going to kind of put, catapult you back up, get you back from the Paul Craig loss and kind of going further down to that uh, that top 10. Yeah, that's the plan. No doubt. That's the plan, man, 100%. So, so you, just got to put in the work and get it done. So you beat Jimmy Crook, what happens? You got a name, are you going to call somebody out or are you just going to wait and see? Close up the time. Uh, I don't know. I have to see, man. I have to see where we're sitting at at that point, where the whole division and everything is at at that point. Y'all know who I want. I want Bishop for half come. Could happen, man. One, one, one day we could see it. Or one day we will see it. If we're going by uh, the way that the division works, we usually see a lot of cool matchups, man. It's very possible. One day. Let's see. It'll be a great one. And he told me that he does a lot of jujitsu as well. So it could be. Oh, you asked him about this matchup? Sorry? You asked him about this matchup? No, I never asked him about this matchup. I wish I did. But I asked him about his jiu-jitsu and he told me that he's uh, he loves jiu-jitsu. He, he likes his striking, but he loves the ground game as well. So should you ever come together and fight, you've got you've got the stand-up. And if it goes to the ground, we've got a bit of a challenge on the ground as well, it sounds like. My jiu-jitsu is like really, really good. It's really good, bro. I, uh, I people, that's another thing. Hey, that's another thing that I mean that I, that'll kind of play in my favor from last fight now. People would be like, oh, yeah, it's no jiu-jitsu and all of that. So I, I like that shit, bro. It's like a secret weapon that no, nobody's aware of until it kind of comes out of nowhere. Hell yeah. So what type of Jamal Hill could we expect then? You're fighting Jimmy Crook. What we expect then? You've got, you've got a bit of frustration. You've got a bit of intensity. You, you want to kind of put everything together. 
bring it back after your first ever loss. Just more evolved. Just the more evolved in my skills and more in my approach and how I am more efficient. That's all I work on. <laughs> Shit. The fuck is that? <laughs> Yo, this motherfucking hornet big as shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, man. I don't blame you. I do the same. I can't handle no bees or wasps, hornets. Yeah, bro. But, uh, what was that? What was the question, bro? Uh, how are you going to be? Sorry, memory went a bit there. So you're going to be a more evolved version of Jamal. More evolved than we've seen before. Oh, yeah, bro. I'm always evolving. I'm always getting better. So, yeah, that's what it's going to be. More evolved, more efficient, more dangerous. Yeah. How are you going to defeat Jimmy Crook? Who? Huh? How, how will you defeat Jimmy Crook? I got to fi- finish. I got to finish him. I want to touch him up, take him to the U. Yeah, take him to the U. Yeah, man. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it at all. So, just before we go, I just wanted to touch upon something that we've not before um, about your merch. So, I never really asked you about your merch. You've got a lot of merchandise that people will be or won't be familiar of. Where could we find all your merch and what kind of merch have you got? Uh, my guy, we had to sweet switch the uh, name of the website uh, to from sweet, uh, sweet Dreams, Sweet Dreams Nation.co. So, now it's Sweet Dreams Nation.co. If you go on there, you can find all my merch on there, my shirts, uh, grinders, everything, hats, all of that, sweatshirts. What's the so most yeah, y'all go off grass, right? man, I really appreciate that. Yeah, man, we'll yeah. get sharing that. We'll get sharing that. So, yeah, the, the good thing is we're gonna we're gonna see you again this year, which is what we're looking forward to, man. And I mean, as we said, we know that the hype always takes a wee bit of a setback from a loss, but we know that it always comes back. It takes one fight, one shift in momentum to come back, get yourself back where you belong. That's it. Exactly. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Well, Jamal, again, always a pleasure. I will uh, hit you up again either before or after the next fight and we'll... uh, We've got all the listeners to the show to jump onto that website and get some cool merch and follow you on your journey and your, your preparation for Jimmy Crit. All right, bro. Yeah, enjoy good, the rest you of your day. You too, man. All right, bro. Take care, buddy. Yeah.